When you take a look at this picture, the star pattern that probably stands out to you is the Big Dipper, which is a smaller pattern in the larger constellation known as Ursa Major. But right next to Ursa Major is a small two-star pattern known as Canis Venetici. And this is classified as a modern constellation and is represented as a pair of hunting dogs. In this video, we will explore the origins of this constellation constellation and easy strategies you can use to help find it in the night sky. Welcome to Learn the Sky. My name is Janine and I'll be your guide as we explore the night sky together one constellation at a time. Let's begin with the basics of Canis Venetici. It's also worth mentioning that I've heard the pronunciation Canis Venetici as well. So I think it just depends on wherever you're located on the globe and what regional accent you have with this. But its name is Latin for hunting dogs, and it is classified as a modern constellation because it was first named by Polish astronomer Johann Hevelius in 1684. It's often represented as the hunting dogs of Botez, Asterian being the northern dog and Chara being the southern dog. This is an easy constellation to find because it's located right next to Ursa Major. So here I pointed out Ursa Major here for you and notice the Big Dipper right here. Canis Venetici is right here. So if you take the last two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper and find the two stars that are somewhat parallel to those two stars, that's how you can find Canis Venetici. It's really just using the handle of the Big Dipper. And the bright star right here is named Cor Caroli, and it's one of the brightest um, in the spring sky, but it's also part of the spring diamond asterism. But Canis Venetici is really famous for all the galaxies that are within the borders of this constellation. Now let's examine the origins of Canis Venetici, or Venetici, however you choose to pronounce it. It is classified as a modern constellation that was identified by Johann Hevelius in 1687, and it's often displayed as a pair of hunting greyhounds. And it was identified in the past by Ptolemy, but it didn't specifically have its own designation. Another cool little fact of history I found about this constellation is that the brightest star, Cor Caroli, means the heart of Charles in memory of King Charles I of Britain. In terms of astronomy, it's the brightest star of this constellation. And it is, in fact, a double star and its orbital period between these two stars stars is 7,900 years, and it's estimated to be 110 light years away. But when we look at some depictions of this constellation, here you can see they are a pair of greyhounds, and here we have the constellation Botes. You can also see Coma Berenices and Corona Borealis. I do have videos on these three constellations, so make sure you go see those videos. But what's so great about about this constellation is that you can see a lot of galaxies within its borders. And we're going to take a look at that a little later in the video. Now let's review the pattern of Canis Venetici. Here we have the star map of this star pattern, and it's easy to remember because it's only two stars. And these two stars are nearly parallel with the last two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper. So it makes it a really easy constellation to find. And it's represented as a pair of hunting dogs, as I said earlier, and it's classified as a seasonal constellation. And this whole area that's outlined in white is classified as the constellation, but the pattern are just these two stars. And what really stands out for me in this photo are all the different objects right here, which are galaxies. Most of them are galaxies, but there is a globular cluster there as well. So let's get some practice with identifying this constellation. When I look at this photo, my eyes are immediately drawn to the Big Dipper right here. And that is an asterism that's part of a larger constellation known as Ursa Major. But if you can find the last two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper, then you can just move your way down the sky and look for the two stars that are parallel 
and that can help you find Canis venatici. Here we have Ursa Major. If we were to outline it for you, that's what it looks like. And that's where Canis venatici is. I, I kind of bounce back and forth with the pronunciation after doing all my research for this video. So um, let's get some more practice. Here we're looking at a picture of, again, the Big Dipper right there. And if you can find the last two stars, this is where Canis venatici is. Remember, you can use the handle of the Big Dipper to arc to Arcturus, and that is Botez right there. And that's the, what is Botez? He's a herdsman, and he's holding on to the the um, the two ground greyhounds in the sky. So to keep getting some more practice, can you find the Big Dipper in this picture? And from there, can you find a Canis venatici? So here we have the Big Dipper right there, and then this is where Canis venatici is. I've got a few more photos here to help you out. Here we have the Big Dipper, you're arcing to Arcturus, and then can you find that two-star constellation? So here we go, We that's where the Big Dipper is, and that's where Canis Venetici is. So it's really easy to find. I challenge you to go outside and see if you're able to find it, and let me know on the comments below. Here is a star, um, star trail picture. It's not a long star trail picture, but you can tell because these stars... Um, they're a little longer than normal, but if you can find the Big Dipper, then you can easily find Canis Venetici. I've got one more picture to help us out here. Okay, this is kind of a, it looks like a little bit of a messy photo, but there is definitely stuff I can point out here. Right here is the Big Dipper. You arc to Arcturus. Oops, what am I doing? I do not want to do that. You arc to Arcturus, and then here are the last two stars of the Big Dipper, which can lead you down to Canis Venetici. Here's Coma Berenices. We have Leo down here. And why don't I just point all of this out for you? That makes it much easier, doesn't it? But this is an easy constellation to find. So I really hope you're able to go outside tonight and find it. In the final portion of this video, we're going to take a look at some of the celestial objects that can be seen in Canis Venetici. So here we have the star map, and this is where I circled all the different celestial objects that you can see. Majority of them, which are galaxies, but there is one globular cluster that can be seen within the boundaries. So we'll start with the smallest objects and then work our way to the larger ones. The first being Messier 3. We've got the Sunflower Galaxy. Galaxy, Whirlpool Galaxy, Messier 106, Cat's Eye Galaxy, and the Whale Galaxy. So Messier 3 is a globular star cluster, and it's estimated to have about 500,000 stars, and it has an age estimate of 8 billion years old. It's estimated to be 33,000 light years away from Earth. And you may need some magnification in order to see this object in the sky, but you definitely Definitely have to seek out any dark skies if you want to be able to see any of these galaxies. Um, Messier 51, this is a Whirlpool galaxy. Now, the Whirlpool galaxy is one that is best photographed over a long exposure period of time. Um, it's not one that you necessarily would see with the naked eye. You would need magnification. But it is a beautiful example of an interacting spiral galaxy. And it's about 35% the size of our own galaxy. And it's estimated to be have 160 billion solar masses there. It is really such an incredible object to see. And this is what it looks like in terms of X-ray sources. So that's really... I don't know, it just gives you a different perspective. This is visible light and infrared data, but here is what, these are the active areas where we're seeing x-rays. Messier 63 is another object that's in the boundaries of this constellation. It's dubbed the Sunflower Galaxy, and it's estimated to be 37 million light years away. Messier 94, also called the Cax Eye Galaxy, or I also heard it called Crocs Eye Galaxy, is estimated to be 16 million light years away. 
Next, there is, oh, this is actually the same galaxy, but we're zooming up here. And just look at this area of star formation. It's really incredible that we are able to get images like this from the Hubble telescope. Another object that is within the borders of this constellation is called Messier 106. And this is a spiral galaxy. And it's interesting because you can see the spiral arms going out in the disk, but they're there's also something else going on here. And if we take a look at the x-rays that are, this is a composite image of radio, infrared, visible light, and x-ray data, it just shows you that there's more going on here with the spiral arms than that quite meets the eye. Like you can kind of see these arms here, but this gives you just a different visual. And I, it just makes me wonder what is, what is going on? And if we were to identify the blue areas are areas of x-rays, um, optical is the gold light here. Infrared data is the red and purple is radio. So in this area. So I love this, this composite image because it just gives you an idea of, or at least it gives you an idea, but it's also kind of a mystery of why we see galaxies like this. And then our final galaxy we take a look at, this one's a neat little one called NGC 4631. It's called the Whale Galaxy because it kind of does look like a little beluga whale. And it's a sparred viral galaxy that we're looking at edge on. If we were to zoom in here, this is what this looks like edge on. So this is a barred spiral galaxy similar to our own. And here's one more image. And again, it does look like, it does kind of look like a beluga whale to me. And then finally, we can't talk about Canis Venetici without talking about something called the giant void. And the giant void is this huge space that has a low density of galaxies. This one is the second largest void. Void. The Canis Venetici super void is the second largest void when we compare it to the Botez void. And it's estimated to be 1 to 1.3 billion light years in diameter and 1.5 billion light years away. So it's an area that has a low density of galaxies. Here's another image of some of the other voids that exist out here. So here's the Botez void right there. And here's Corona Borealis. So other ones that are listed here, but for some reason, the one we are talking about is not listed. It must be probably around this area, I'm, I'm, if I had to guess. So this concludes our video about Canis Venetici. Uh, these this pair of stars right here is represented as hunting dogs, and it's best seen in the spring months. It's classified as a seasonal constellation. The best way to find it is to use Ursa Major or the Big Dipper within the Ursa Major constellation, and look for the last two stars in the handle of the Big Dipper, and that's where you can find the two stars of Canis Venetici that are somewhat parallel to those last two stars. The brightest star right here is called um, Core Coroli. I'm going to actually correct that because I was incorrect there. And then the celestial objects, they have a wide variety of ones for you to look at, most of which are invisible to the naked eye. You would definitely need a telescope or magnification in order to see it. And all the pictures that we're looking at here are, these are telescopes that are taking pictures in space. That's why we're able to capture the detail of these different images. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know, have you, able, have you been able to find this constellation? To me, it's one that's fairly easy to find. So I encourage you to get out there and try to find it and let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep looking up.